Hi guys, welcome back to Waxing On. It's Friday, and Friday's kind of a mixed bag for us. So today we're going to look at different formats that we've listened to our music in. And I'm not going way back to the very beginning. I'm going to cover probably from the 1950s on, from eras I'm familiar with. And one of the first things I wanted to show you was an old 78 record I have. This one's kind of special because it's colored. It's not really vinyl, it's a different material it's on. You can see this one's on Domino Records. It's got the single hole in the middle like we have for most albums that people will be familiar with. Except this one played at 78 revolutions per minute. Uh, again, this is uh, At Sundown by the Palm Beach Serenaders. And side two was Positively Absolutely by the Arcadians. Two songs. Basically, it was like a single. You couldn't get a lot on these albums. But, again, they were very popular in their day. Now, back when I was young, my first record player had three speeds on it. 78, 45, and 33 and a third. So it accommodated albums like this. Nowadays, you're kind of a little harder pressed to find a record player that would play this album. I know you can still find a few of them, but, again, this was something that's kind of gone out of style. So from the 78s, we moved into the albums, but they also moved into something called singles. And this is where we got all the hits from. An example, here's my 45 RPM single. Very similar to the 78 that you only have two songs, one on each side. You see the hole's quite a bit larger, but in order to accommodate the record players, we used to have a little plastic insert that went in here that filled that hole as well as left a little spot to put it on the on the turntable. Now, originally in some of the jukeboxes, or even on some of the old, what we call hi-fis, you would get a tube that would be big enough to fill that so you could stack a number of these and play them. Kind of like your own little playlist. But again, it operated at 45 RPM. You got two songs on there. And in my day, I mean, this talking early to mid-60s, it was about a dollar for this, which was quite a quite a steep price for a, a single. I mean, albums were going under $5. And again, what was happening, this is where the hits came from. When you heard uh, music on AM radio, people would often buy the hit. If you bought the album, you would get the hits, but you might get what we have been talking about all along, filler. And sometimes your B-side was not as classic as the first. But anyways, that was the other format we went to were 45s. Then we moved into albums becoming the popular way of doing things. A lot larger casing. Just to give you an example, I have one here. It's on Verve Records. You can see it looks more like the 78, a little bit larger. Still got that tiny little hole to put in there. And here we can stretch a lot of music out. Sometimes we were getting 20, 25 minutes on one side. So you had, you know, almost an hour's worth of music on your album. And it played at 33 and a third. So just an extension of what we had with the other two. Now, by the time we got into the early 70s or so, we were taking our music with us. So when we were in the cars, we wanted to be able to listen to it. So at this point, we couldn't take albums in the car, obviously. We needed to have something a little more portable. We came up with eight tracks. A little smaller. Uh... Just to give you an idea here too, you can see there's the tape goes through there. It was one continuous loop inside here. So this thing would play continually. So if you put your music in, this one John Mayle. First one I thought was Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. We'll talk about them in a few weeks. Now if you put your music into the 8-track player, you could listen to it endlessly. So if you got busy doing something, could have been chores, could have been a work project, who knows? Just saying, you didn't have to get up and uh, change the music. Downside of these were they weren't really great in cold weather. If you take them out in the car, you ran the risk of things like this happening. Tapes getting pulled out. Or with age, the tapes getting broken. And basically, that was the end of it. You could take it apart and sometimes tape them together, but you lost the ability to change tracks or programs. These all, why well, they're called 8-tracks, have four different programs on them with a number of songs in each. And sometimes with the uh, length of the song, they would actually break the song up. You would have half of it on one program and the other half of the song on the other program. So it wasn't ideal, 
but it was a way we could take our music with us and be more portable. Again, there were drawbacks. Let's see what I have on here. Uh, don't touch the tape. When not in use, disconnect the cartridge. Okay, we had that. Clean player regularly. Protect cartridge from intense sunlight or extreme heat or cold. Well, that's the one we often got ourselves caught at, right? Cars out in the summer, taking your CDs out from the house and putting them in a cold player, not CDs, 8-tracks, putting them in a cold player, and that was the end of them. So we progressed from the 8-tracks to something maybe a little better, a little more compact. We could still take it in the car with us, but by this stage, we were also carrying Walkman, so we could carry music with us, you know, on our belt. And these were cassettes. I think we looked at these uh, a few weeks ago. We had a couple of old ones ahead. You can see how small they are. Same idea with the tape in it. Two sides gave you pretty much the same length. We could look up to an hour's worth of music on there. But again, we carried it in the car. We could wear it on our belt. We had little boom boxes, we called them, that we played it in. And they were a far cry better than the 8-track only because they weren't really as fragile. Now, sometimes we would get this happening. You can see it there. It looks like what I had with the 8-track, but a little different because the beauty of these are we could fix them. If I had a pencil, I got a pen here, but it's not a pencil, you could put it inside here and it would fit right in these little grooves. You see those little notches? And allow you to basically, I'm going to do it by hand here. You can see I can put my finger in there and do the same thing. Pull that tape back in, good as new. So quick, easy repair if your tapes did get pulled apart. And again, a good way to listen to music for the era. Now, it wasn't long after that that we started getting into CDs. Now, what I didn't like about 8-tracks and cassettes was there's no information. Now, with cassettes, sometimes they did open up a little bit and they would have some, you know, additional uh, information in there about the band. But as a whole, eight tracks, you got nothing. Cassettes, you might get something, you might not. Along came CDs. With CDs, often came a booklet. And this booklet, well, again, it had the words, it had who's playing on the album, it had when it was recorded, who wrote the songs, and... That was one of the bonuses with albums. I'll just show you one I've got here. I'm just going to flash back a little bit to the albums. This one was uh, Tina Turner Live. Two record set. Great stuff in the middle. Something to look at. But you also got, in this case, some giveaways. A book comes with it. Now, a lot of times these books, I mean, they've got lots of photos in here. A lot of times the books also would carry uh, lyrics and details about who was, uh, who was in the band and again, where it was recorded, all those kind of things. And I can remember listening to albums and there was nothing better than listening to the music and reading all this stuff or, you know, just checking out the album cover or the inserts. Beatles, White Album, gigantic fold-out poster with all the lyrics, four 8x10 photos of the guys. Chicago, when they put albums out, there's constantly photos and giveaways in all the albums. There's lots of bonuses. We lost that with 8-tracks, we lost it with cassettes. With CDs, we got a little bit back. Now we've got booklets that we can read while we're listening. We can get a lot of background information. It was really good. Then we moved to digital. Okay, I never thought I was gonna be a person to download music. I ended up getting an iPod and yeah, it was convenient. It was nice having my whole record collection in my pocket. It was nice being able to bounce around from songs, not having to run up and change the record on the record player, not having to turn those tapes over. Again, we're back to the same downside. Once we hit the digital world or the downloads, we lost all the information. This was great if you only wanted to listen to music and you really didn't care about the other information. It was convenient. It was cheap. It was easy. I mean, instead of having to wait to run to the record store and hope they had what I wanted, I had the whole record libraries available to me, and in 30 seconds, you know, they're in my pocket. Now, with streaming networks, we got the same thing. We don't have very much information. We don't have any background, but we've got available bil availability to a lot of music instantly. So, 
We've come a long way from the 78s, 45s, 33s, 8 tracks, cassettes, CDs, digital downloads, streaming. I mean, more music is available to us now than it ever was, and it's at our fingertips. Uh, I'll just caution everybody to remember again that not all streaming networks pay the same to the musicians or the performers, so do shop around. Um, look after the musicians. I mean, they're the ones making the music for us. And support those that do make sure they get paid well. Okay, that's it for this week. Something a little different. Everybody have a great weekend. Don't forget to wear your masks, and we'll see you on Monday.